All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's Dr. Dan Ritchie, president of the Functional Aging Institute. It is Thursday, December 3rd, one o'clock Eastern, 11 Mountain Time, 10 Pacific. I don't know what time it is in Hawaii, but someone will probably tell us. <laughs> if you are on live, I'd love for you to type in the chat for everyone to see. So make sure you mark to all attendees uh, where you're tuning in from country, city, zip code, time zone. If you're a functional aging specialist, if you're a Tai Chi certified instructor through FAI, that would be cool to see that as well. And if this is the first time you've ever seen Diane teach, uh, that'd be great to see as well. We had a bunch of first timers on Diane and I think they were pleasantly surprised at how easy you made them uh, feel Tai Chi could be for them. So several people were like, wow, you've kind of opened my eyes to this could be possible. So. <laughs> If you're not familiar with Diane, she is the creator of Open the Door to Tai Chi and FAI has partnered with her now for several years to basically bring Tai Chi to the masses. Our, our hope is that 10 years from now, Tai Chi will be the next yoga and people will be doing Tai Chi in every community center, fitness center, YMCA, you name it, they'll be offering it. So, um, so that we're really excited about that. And Diane also runs the conditioning classroom, her training studio, she is a personal trainer. Um, it's important to know she's coming at this from both a martial arts background, but also a personal training background. So she understands the personal training world. She runs the conditioning classroom in Centennial, Colorado for the last 17 years. Let me just ask real quick, Diane, before you uh, share your slides, is your studio open and have you been able to continue to train and can you do Tai Chi with COVID and how does all that been working yes. for you? Yes, we are open. We're limited in the number of people that we can have in here at any one time. Um, so right now my Tai Chi classes, I, I have four, I'm limited to four people at a time in the class. Um, but I have two separate big rooms. Um, my studio is actually very conducive to um, this kind of limited ab ability. So we are still doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one training and um, the Tai Chi classes. Our small group classes are pretty limited though because of, you know, technically we're only supposed to have 10% of capacity in here. Wow, wow, okay, cool. Well, um, one of these days, the Functional Aging Summit will get out to your place. We were supposed to be there June, 2020. Um, who knows if that will happen in June, 2021, but uh, we were hoping to have a workshop, a Tai Chi workshop at Diane's studio since our conference was gonna be in Denver. So, well, Diane, I'll let you take it away. Um, okay. I see a lot of people typing in where they're from here all around. So that is cool. Custom Fitness in Ontario, Canada. Chris, welcome. Um, I will hop off of here and I'll come back for uh, live Q&A at the end. Sounds good. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. And thank you everyone for taking the time. Today we're going to do a lot of study on Tai Chi. On Tuesday we were actually able to experience Tai Chi. Today we're going to get a lot of the background of why Tai Chi is successful. And it's not um, just because Diane says it is. There's, there's a lot of research that we're going to go through. This is a very research dense day for us. So stick with me on this. This is a copy of my book, Tai Open the Door to Tai Chi, Tai Chi for the Everyday Person. And that's really what this uh, talk is about is Tai Chi should be for the everyday person. And the everyday person is probably not very similar to what you see on the cover of Men's Health or on the cover of Shape magazine. Most people are not uh, that fit. They don't look like that picture. A lot of people, especially if you're dealing with an older population, we have more, let's say, as we age, there's more opportunity to gather different conditions. <laughs> Not saying that you have to, but you have more opportunity to be uh, beset by a chronic condition or an illness. And the whole idea of today is to show you that Tai Chi can be for everyone, for the everyday person. So just real briefly, what we went over on Tuesday, what is Tai Chi? 
Tai Chi is a martial art that utilizes gentle flowing movements to enhance health in the body and the mind. And as we saw on Tuesday, those gentle flowing movements have a purpose that they have many benefits. And those benefits, which we focused on on Tuesday, we really focused on the benefit of being more balanced. But there are other benefits that come from doing Tai Chi. But as we also discovered on Tuesday, it's not just by doing gentle flowing movements. You don't just stand in a room and move your arms around and get these many benefits. You actually have to understand the underlying principles and you have to learn how to apply these underlying principles. We're not gonna go through these underlying principles today. That's actually part of what you learn in the Open the Door to Tai Chi certification course is you learn how to apply those principles and how to teach them so that your clients are getting the benefits of Tai Chi. What today is gonna to be all about is we're gonna go through a list of different conditions that we're gonna give a definition of that. And then I'm gonna show you some research studies that prove the efficacy of Tai Chi. So at this point, what I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper and your favorite writing instrument. And I want you to write down the left-hand side of that piece of paper. I just want you to write numbers one through nine and leave some space in between because what we're gonna do is as we go through these research studies, you're gonna be listing out certain points that at the end of this webinar, you will find why Tai Chi is so successful. So you have your sheet of paper, list one through nine on that sheet of paper. And these are the different conditions that we're gonna be looking at. Um, and I know that as you look at this list, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> I know at that very bottom, you're going, what does athletes, what, why is that on this list? Well, stick with me through this webinar, through these research studies, and you'll discover why I have that on the list. But again, if you're dealing with any kind of older population, you know that you can face many of these, if not all of them. So this is why it's important to look at why Tai Chi? Why is Tai Chi successful with these? So the first one, remember we're gonna go through definition. First one, cancer. And uh, of course we all know cancer, right? It's, it's, it used to be the big C. I'm not sure that if COVID has taken that over yet, but the <laughs> cancer, is not just one disease, it's actually a group of many different diseases and it can involve any tissue of the body. The, we know that cancer can be a very scary uh, diagnosis and different uh, approaches to it. There are many different approaches to helping that person heal, possibly overcome cancer or they might have to live with that cancer. The studies with Tai Chi and cancer survivorship, it, this study starts off with knowing that regular physical activity is associated with a reduced risk of developing cancer, reduced risk of developing cancer, and a reduced risk of recurrence of breast, hot, prostate, and colorectal cancer and improved survival. But one of the barriers to actually getting cancer patients to exercise is this debilitating fatigue that comes with the disease. The study goes on to say cancer survivors may be more willing to replace sedentary activities with standing or light activities such as Tai Chi. So the very first thing I want you to write on your list, number one, is light, gentle exercise 
encouraging participation. This is a key point about Tai Chi. And as we go through this list of nine things, you'll actually start to see things being repeated. Sometimes the treatment for cancer includes chemotherapy. And there's a very real experience called chemo brain that it is a cognitive impairment, lack of concentration, short-term memory loss. Um, this study actually included Tai Chi as an understudied but promising tool, promising to increase light physical activity levels with the additive meditative benefits, thus improving survival outcomes, including reduction in cancer recurrence, improved psychosocial health, and cognitive function. So the next thing that I want you to write on your sheet of paper is improvement in mental functioning and psychosocial health. Don't worry about the spelling. But in this study, it actually showed that women with moderate cognitive impairment a year or more after chemotherapy, they were taking a 60-minute Tai Chi class twice a week, and it resulted in improved immediate memory, delayed memory, verbal fluency, attention, and executive functioning. So there's your psychosocial, if you don't know how to spell it, improvement in mental functioning and psychosocial health. This is a different study that it had three months of TCC is Tai Chi Chuan. And this one actually showed a reduction in pro-inflammatory mediators. It showed that Tai Chi helped the immune system by reducing inflammation. And this is an amazing study. If you think about the, uh, how this can translate to other diseases, because we know that inflammation is the, uh, one of the roots of a lot of different lifestyle diseases. And this one showed that Tai Chi helped reduce that inflammation response. It says here, Tai Chi and other mind-body therapies may play a part in regulating the immune system. It may increase virus-specific cell-mediated immune responses. And given the link between inflammation and cancer incidence and progression, these findings provide an evidence-based molecular framework to understand the potential salutary effects of mind-body therapies such as Tai Chi on cancer survivorship. So the next thing on your list, number three, improvement in immune system function. Now don't be um, put off right away. Yes, I'm only showing some of the research studies, but as we go through all of these conditions, you'll start to see these, these uh, benefits repeated over and over again. Still in the cancer uh, research studies, significant improvements were found in self-esteem in the Tai Chi group compared with the psychosocial support group, had a positive influence on quality of life and psychological health. High retention rates compared with retention rates below 85% in other exercise promotion trials. This is, this is an interesting piece of the puzzle. You know, it says, therefore, Tai Chi may be a sustainable form of physical activity for this population. Not only did it help with immune system, helped you know, mod modulate that inflammatory response, not only helped with mental functioning, but it helped with feeling good about themselves, which if you've known anybody with a cancer diagnosis, this is critical mm -hmm. that if they have a good outlook, if they have a good mental framework, it actually helps them fight the cancer. And the 
bottom part of that where it says a sustainable form of physical activity, that's important as well because they can continue to do it. They're encouraged to do it. So in number four, you have quality of life improvement, self-esteem, and positive outlook. And number five, right after it, is that it's doable and safe for the long term. This is important that we, you know that Tai Chi is something that you can do for the long term and that it's safe for people to do for the long term. It's not just an eight week course that you do and immediately your immune system is all better and, and you're done. This is something that you do for life and those benefits continue as you continue to do them. If you work at all with an older population, you probably know somebody with fibromyalgia. Um, it's not a, a definitive, there's no medical test that comes up with a diagnosis of fibro, but it's, it's a weeding out of possible cause of symptoms. And it, it's a very debilitating uh, condition that people with fibromyalgia have a lot of pain and a, they're a lot of fatigue. The most effective treatment, it says, is a combination of education, stress reduction, exercise, and medication. So this is one of the pieces where Tai Chi fits in, not only with exercise, but with stress reduction as well. So aerobic exercise has been the go-to exercise for uh, fibromyalgia. This study looked at Tai Chi versus aerobic exercise and how was it effective comparatively. And it says Tai Chi mind-body treatment results in similar or greater improvement in symptoms than aerobic exercise. Longer duration of Tai Chi showed greater improvement. This mind-body approach may be considered a therapeutic option in the multidisciplinary management of fibro. And again, you can look back as that doable and safe for the long term. And it's a piece of the puzzle for people. This study focused on functional mobility for those with fibromyalgia. And it said those in the Tai Chi group compared with the education group, demonstrated clinically and statistically significant improvements in their fibromyalgia impact questionnaire and in their brief pain inventory, severity and pain interference. They showed significant improvements in sleep and self-efficacy for pain control. Functional mobility variables included time, get up and go, static balance and dynamic balance, and these things were significantly improved with Tai Chi compared with the education. No adverse events were noted. It says at the bottom, Tai Chi appears to be a safe and acceptable exercise modality and may be useful as an adjunctive therapy in the management of fibromyalgia patients. Again, it's safe, it's doable for the long term. And if you think about it as fitness professionals, you know, these timed get up and go, the balance test, these are things that we want to see improvement in our everyday person, in all of our clients. And that's what I love about this study is that it does show that improvement. So number six, I want you to write down improvement in balance and functional mobility with less pain. When you're talking about somebody with fibromyalgia, that pain part is really important because it's hard for them to move. It, it's a chronic pain and it, it affects them mentally, it affects them physically. This, as it, it, this study actually looked at chronic pain in terms of osteoarthritis, low back pain, rheumatoid arthritis, and fibro. We're gonna talk about arthritis next, but in terms of 
doing Tai Chi exercise. It talks about the slow motion and the weight shifting. Remember what we did on Tuesday, that those gentle flowing movements may improve musculoskeletal strength and joint stability. Concentration and mindfulness meditation may modulate multiple aspects of health, including mood, functions of the immune system and immune and autonomic nervous systems. And look at there, we were already starting to see some of the repeat of things that we've talked about in the um, earlier on our list, improvement in immune system, improvement in mood. So I want you to write down fluid, flowing, gentle movements. It's actually an important piece of why Tai Chi is important, is successful. Now this is obviously not a research study, but this is a testimonial from somebody that I um, have that has done Tai Chi in my studio here in Denver. And she talks about how feeling constantly in fight or flight mode in her body, that's what her body feels like. And she says, Tai Chi has an amazing calming effect on my mind and body. The slow fluid movement and measured breathing definitely promotes relaxation. So for this particular person with fibro, Tai Chi is this form of exercise that's doable, it's safe, and it helps her body relax. So number eight, I want you to put calming, reducing stress, it BP blood pressure, and we'll, I'll show you studies later about reducing blood pressure, but actually getting into the parasympathetic system. This is something that Tai Chi, that's a gift that Tai Chi brings is allowing your body to get into that parasympathetic state, which is really where it needs to be all of the time. I did an entire webinar on just Tai Chi and stress reduction. You know, and, and you can see some of the webinars on my YouTube channel, uh, and you can go back and look at that stress one. It, it's actually very fascinating. This is another one of my clients who she has severe arthritis and fibromyalgia, and she talks about how Tai Chi helps her with her energy. It helps her with her balance in doing everyday chores. She says movements became smoother and more fluid, requiring less energy, just by adding Tai Chi into her world. Now this lady also, like I said, she has arthritis, she has uh, fibromyalgia, she also had to have, um, she had scoliosis, and she had 12 of her vertebrae fused about two or three years ago. And she says that, Tai Chi is the foundation for my recovery and my future return to full activity. Just watching her move is, is an amazing thing. And I know that Tai Chi has been critical to her recovery. So I put her in between the fibro and the arthritis section because she does have both. And again, arthritis is not a single disease. It's uh, men, there are many different types of arthritis, but this is the number one disability in the United States. It's affects, it affects many, many people. And again, if you have older adults in your um, client, in your clientele, you're going to have to deal with arthritis. Tai Chi with arthritis the patients experienced improved physical condition and confidence in moving. They saw improved balance and they had less pain during their exercise and in daily life. That's a really important piece that it's actually helping them deal with their pain. It's improving their balance. You're starting to see how these things are repeating in other conditions. Tai Chi significantly improved pain, stiffness, and physical function in, in patients with osteoarthritis. That study before was rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. It indicates that Tai Chi has benefits in the management of osteoarthritis. 
This one is a particular favorite. This study is a particular favorite of mine because it took, you know, with people with arthritis, we often think of having them exercise in a pool in hydrotherapy, right? Because it takes away the body, um, it, it takes away gravity basically, and they don't have to be supporting their body weight, which helps with their pain levels. Well, this one compared hydrotherapy class to a Tai Chi class, and it says both types of classes, both the swimming and the Tai Chi resulted in large improvements in self-reported physical function greater than improvements demonstrated for traditional land-based exercise. And I love that because it shows that you have options. For people like me who I do not like to be in a pool, I don't want to put on a swimsuit. I don't want to have to go to the rec center. This showed that Tai Chi was just as valuable for those with arthritis as the hydrotherapy. So the last thing that I want you to put on your sheet of paper is it is an alternative form of exercise. So if you look at this list, light gentle exercise, encouraging participation, improvement in mental functioning and psychosocial health, improvement in immune system functioning, quality of life improvement, giving a positive outlook, it's doable and it's safe for the long term. You have improvement in balance and functional mobility with less pain. It incorporates fluid flowing, gentle movements, helps with calming the body and getting into the parasympathetic system. And it is an acceptable alternative form of exercise. That's an amazing uh, list when you look at it. And we're gonna, as we go through the rest of these research studies, I want you to start to star all the times that you see these different things in these other studies. It says Tai Chi is a lower intensity exercise of flowing circular movements. There you go. Balance and weight shifting, deep breathing. It encourages patients to move fluidly with less strain. And improved joint mobility and decreased joint pain may be beneficial for those with osteoarthritis. It can promote psychosocial well being. And the nature of Tai Chi and the multiple potential effects on the body and mind are, that differ from other conventional exercise may account for these beneficial effects. It's that alternative exercise. So now we're going to start to go through these pretty quickly, but I do want you to star as you see those benefits on your sheet of paper. Dealing with Parkinson's disease. You know, they, they have gait issues a lot of times because of a degeneration in the area of the brain called the basal, the basal ganglia. They have a low production of neurotransmitter dopamine. Again, this is a disease that there's no test that actually diagnoses it, but it is chronic and progressive. Using Tai Chi with Parkinson's is a doable and safe form of exercise. If you think that Tai Chi training significantly improved not only the balance function, but also the visual attention in older adults at risk of progressive cognitive decline. So again, we're talking about not only physical benefits, but mental benefits as well. And they experienced significant improvement in emotional well-being. Substantially, it, it improved their balance and made them feel better about themselves. They, the Tai Chi group performed better in the than the stretching group. They lowered their incidence of falls, and the effects of Tai Chi training were maintained at three months after the intervention. No serious adverse events were observed. Again, it's doable and it's safe for the long term. This one talked about the movements, the, the weight shift, the slow movement, and muscle coordination, and that's important for helping people with Parkinson's as well. I had a 
client in my studio, John, he's a pretty funny guy. He talks about the um, psyche as part of the equation of helping him, Tai Chi helping him get a grip on his jumbled up world. He said Tai Chi is very calming and it helps his balance. It helps him get control of his body and it gives him a structure of exercise that he needs. This one came from a, this testimonial came from one of my uh, certified instructors in Alabama. It says Tai Chi significantly helped my balance even beyond my rock steady class. So again, it's an alternative form of exercise. It's a piece of the puzzle. It's not just the whole puzzle. This gentleman's going to rock steady and Tai Chi and the two together are helping him. So we're gonna move on to MS now. In Colorado, MS is a, is a big um, issue. We have more people with MS here in Colorado than any other state in the nation. And fatigue is a big part of MS. And again, that light, gentle exercise, encouraging participation is part of why it's successful with MS. It's also successful in helping with gait, in balance, helping them with their fatigue and their overall outlook of life. Again, it's a safe and doable form of exercise. This study talked about the MS patients in the Tai Chi group demonstrated significant improvements in quality of life, such as pain, emotional well being, energy, social function. All of these things, again, are driving towards this list of you can see how Tai Chi is not just standing in a room doing slow, gentle movements. It's actually proven to improve the quality of life, to improve balance, to improve mental functioning. Fatigue is one of those things with multiple sclerosis that that slow, gentle exercise is important for them to have something that is not so pounding on their body. It, this one talks about you know, challenges with coordination and balance, that it helped with coordination and balance relative to the TAU as therapy as usual group. Cardiac rehab, it, people with cardiac events, this again is something you might not think of as Tai Chi as part of their rehab, but exercise is important for cardiac rehab. And they found that the acceptance of, with the exercise intensity of Tai Chi being low, that this is helping encourage cardiac, uh, people have had a cardiac event, encouraging them to enter into exercise. It's a safe alternative. It has, this study actually showed that it may prevent and even reverse the progression of cardiac disease. This study showed, you know, cardiac rehabilitation where exercise training, muscle strength training, aerobic training, but with Tai Chi, it actually has an improvement in cardiorespiratory function. You don't think of it as a cardiorespiratory exercise, but it did show balance and postural stability, fall prevention, stress reduction. That's a huge part of that cardiac rehab um, piece as well with Tai Chi. This is not a research study. This was actually an article out of Harvard Medical um, School, where it says that more than 60% of eligible people choose not to attend their rehab program because they're afraid that it's too difficult or tiring. But Tai Chi is that gentle form of exercise, encouraging participation. That's an important benefit. Down at the bottom, it says Tai Chi's main benefit may be to encourage people who are reluctant to exercise to move more. The practice also emphasizes breathing, focused attention, and visualization. 
All of these factors seem to help lower stress, something doctors increasingly realize plays a key role in preventing heart disease. I have a client in um, my studio that this is a woman that she had a major heart attack and she did not like the rehab that she had to go through. She found me with Tai Chi and she knows that Tai Chi actually helps her calm down. I love how she says near the end, she goes, I could truly feel the stress vacate my body. Now I know that's anecdotal, but again, it's encouraging to actually hear from real people that Tai Chi is helping them reduce their stress. It is helping them continue with exercise. If you think about stroke, where stroke affects one side or the other, and it's, it is a major problem with balance, stroke survivors receiving Tai Chi as rehabilitation recovered better compared with those receiving only conventional rehabilitation. Also, the effect on a patient's immune system, how it helps may prevent, or excuse me, prevent replicative senescence and promote recovery from stroke. Stroke survivors receiving Tai Chi comprehensively exhibit significant amelioration in post-stroke neurological function deficits. This one here, it showed that the group, the stroke uh, survivors that had Tai Chi actually had better improvement on their affected and their non-affected sides. So here we are with our final, one of these things don't look like the other group. And yes, I included athletes in this group, not as a chronic condition, but as a look at the everyday person. If you see that quote at the bottom from Bill Bowerman, it says, if you have a body, you're an athlete. <laughs> In other words, an athlete can be a top competitor or an average finisher. So this is why I included it in this list because this is part of the everyday person. And Tai Chi is actually a piece of that puzzle for an athlete as well. Elite athletes can benefit from doing slow movements because everyone needs better balance and muscle control. Think about that. What athlete doesn't need to be more balanced? Now we've left the realm of actual uh, studies. So I wanna be clear about this. This is just an article. Um, I found it fascinating because there was this elite athlete that was in Hawaii and he was working really hard doing his vigorous exercise and he saw a group doing Tai Chi and he said in his mind it looked useless. He said, but then he actually tried it and he said it's not a lesser form of exercise that old people do because they can't do anything else. Remember that it's not a lesser form of exercise. Practicing Tai Chi and Qigong has had a positive impact on my athletic performance and more importantly on my life by increasing my body awareness, by improving flexibility and strength, and by decreasing my chance of injury because I am, like I said on Tuesday, have, have that balance of hard exercise and soft exercise. I find it interesting that you've got some um, athletes that you might know, Tiger Woods, Novak Djokovic, doing Qigong and Tai Chi because it's an important piece of mental focus as well. It helps you learn how to breathe. It helps you remove tension. And in, as you're talking to your everyday athlete, a lot of athletes, if they're approaching their sport, whatever it is, if they're all tensed up, that actually wastes energy. If they can learn to focus with their Tai Chi and translate that to their golf, to their tennis, they're gonna play better. So as you look at your list of nine things, 
including you know the slow gentle movements the fluid the relaxation response the mental focus the ability of tai chi to be a great introduction to exercise all of these things look very similar to a combination of the definition of tai chi the benefits of tai chi and how they relate to those underlying principles think about how this gentle form of exercise as you focus on those underlying principles how these can get the benefits for your clients it's not a lesser form of exercise that was what all of these research studies were for is to give you confidence that tai chi is an important piece of the puzzle tai chi should be included in your overall plan for yourself and for your clients it is for everybody and i want to give you the confidence that you can learn it if you were participating in tuesdays you saw that you can do some tai chi and it is very simple to do you can learn it you can learn to teach it that it's not as mysterious as you might think those underlying principles are going to be bringing the benefits to your own body and to those of your clients if you can understand that tai chi is that piece of the puzzle that you might be missing that your everyday person actually needs the certification course will just real briefly go over this is why i created open the doors to make it easy to understand to make it accessible to the everyday person in that certification course i actually teach you the history of tai chi i teach you the individual movements and then i teach you the flow of the form you don't have to know anything about tai chi before you get into that certification i teach you everything you need to know and then i also teach you that really important piece of the underlying principles not only how to incorporate those principles but how to teach and i help you figure out how to organize classes or to use it in your um, personal training sessions as well when you become a certified to open the door to tai chi instructor you're also part of a membership that is a dynamic group of instructors that we really support each other with not only continuing education but help in how we're approaching our clients we have a very robust video membership site that gives you lots of continuing education as well so this is you're not out there all by yourself at and which especially right now is an important thing you're not we're, we're not able to get together as fitness professionals as much as we used to be able to do but this group of instructors tai chi instructors we are a community and we are helping each other even though it is virtually <laughs> so dan i don't know if there's any questions um i just wanted to give people the confidence with those research studies i know that we can slog through those studies and it can be a little dense but that gives people the confidence that tai chi is a legitimate form of exercise it's it's not just a slow moving woo woo thing it actually is helping the everyday person yep we do have some questions and i'm sure we'll have more now that you are finished we've got a couple here to get to right away um <clears throat> Someone was asking uh, about halfway through, but I don't think it was necessary to interrupt you. Greg wanted to know, can Tai Chi be done in yes, a chair? It can. Um, I have on that video membership site, we have um, th three or four different videos showing modifications for people that are, that either cannot stand um, or are chair bound. Um, you know, they might not be able to stand because of fatigue or something, but um, yes, we have modifications for that. 
All right, Nig I think it's Nigel um, asks a, a good question that we all need to hear the answer on. I'm curious, uh, what credentials are needed to teach Tai Chi legally and whom can we teach? <laughs> legally, well, there is no governing board for uh, legality. It's not like being a physical therapist. Um, there, you, in order to be an instructor for Tai Chi, you need to understand not only why you're doing what you're doing, what the movements are, but you need to be able to understand those underlying principles. And that's why, you know, the Open the Door to Tai Chi course is important because it does teach you why those, how to incorporate those principles and how to get the benefits for your clients. Um, the, you don't have to be a personal trainer to be a Tai Chi instructor. There, there's no requirement there. Um, you, I would recommend that you, if you're gonna be in front of people teaching, if you're gonna be um, responsible for them, I would recommend that you have your basic uh, first aid and CPR certification. But um, th there is no governing board, there's no legal uh, system for that. With, the open the door to Tai Chi system, we do help with um, understanding the business side of it and getting clients in how, if you want to start classes or if you just want to, if you are a personal trainer, if you want to incorporate it in your sessions, we help you with that as well. Okay, Stacy's asking about, uh, specifically about a client of hers who is deaf as well as arthritic and is, really terrified of falling. Um, she's got poor balance, uh, poor uh, equilibrium. She's thinking Tai Chi would be beneficial for her, but she's terrified of open spaces, which of course you need some open spaces for Tai Chi. So have you had any successful experience with clients who are deaf or hard of hearing and do Tai Chi or, or maybe people that are just terrified of falling in a big open room? Um, yes. It, it hearing impaired I have not with completely deaf um, however um, it, I, I have had I had a lady in in uh, class pre-COVID uh, she was almost 90 and she was very unbalanced and I would have a chair next to her she wanted to stand which was awesome that was that's what she needed to be doing but she had a chair that was one of the modifications that we used so that she, that gave her confidence that if she felt she was going to fall, she could grab onto the chair. Um, I would also put her next to a wall so that she wasn't in the middle of the room. You know, she, she had that confidence of, okay, if I need to grab hold of the wall, I could do that. Um, it, these kind of modifications, you know, and you may start, you may want to start this person in a chair, learning Tai Chi in a chair. And the underlying principles apply just the same in a chair as they do standing. So as they learn those, then you might attempt to, you know, have them stand for a little bit with the chair in front of them, you know, and, and that will help give them confidence as well. So there's, there are many different progressions. I, I doubt very seriously that this person would want to be in a class situation i think that would be terrifying but it individual you can progress as they um are com more comfortable yeah 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 great for sure um nigel says awesome class great info uh dan alexander uh this is probably a broader more global question and a, a great question for everyone on the recording i'm worried that practicing without an instructor Without feedback, I will move incorrectly, inefficiently, unbalanced. Can you assuage these fears that I have? I'm going to add to that, Diane. Maybe you can share a little bit with us how many people have been certified through your program and have never actually done a live workshop with you. You know, we have uh, over 500 instructors across the world um, by using our technology. Um, most of those instructors have never taken a live workshop with me. Um, I do have the distinction option for the certification, which 
for a little bit extra, you get Zoom sessions with me. And I actually have eyes on you and you can, I, I can help correct if need be. Um, you can always, that's part of being a community of the Open the Door to Tai Chi instructors too, is I have instructors that I've already certified that they just touch base with me via Zoom um, every once in a while and, and we have a class together, just the two of us. So it, yes, I can assuage your fears because yes, you do have access to me and uh, I, would, I would love to be able to help you individually with your form. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, I mean, I think one of the the beautiful things of technology and, and online education is that it, it does open up the door to a lot more people because it's not like 500 trainers we're going to all trek to Centen Centennial, Colorado and, you know, spend a week with you, but they can do that virtually online. And, and that's really been the same model for the functional aging specialists in our other courses too, right? Like we weren't going to get 5,000 trainers to come to West Lafayette, Indiana. Um, more, more would go to Denver, I'm sure, than would go to West Lafayette, West Lafayette Indiana. So um, online education is, is pretty critical on this. And uh, I, I certainly hope in 2021, Dan, we'll have live workshops back and the opportunity for people to learn that way too. But I, my hunch is 95% of your 500, you know, Tai Chi instructors have come through the online education realm yes. simply because the, the number of live workshops are always uh, limited. So, yes. Um, and, and I have, it's so fun, Dan, to, um, especially when I do meet somebody by Zoom that I, I watch them do their form and I'm like, wow, I taught that person Tai Chi and I, 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 I just met them. <laughs> so, and it really, it really, the, it, the course works. Um, you, you will learn Tai Chi. You have the confidence to do it. And again, if you want to have that Zoom uh, option with me, I love doing that. Great, great. Um, Margaret is on here. I hope Margaret's still with us, but Margaret, it was from Bermuda, and uh, that was the one location since it's 27 degrees here today that caught my attention. Um, we are always looking for future workshops, and I have a hunch. I, I, I don't want to speak for you on this one, Diane, but I have a hunch that you'd be willing to do a live workshop in Bermuda sometime in the future. I, yes. <laughs> I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I didn't want to speak for you on that, but, but I'm in. So Margaret, right. we'll, uh, we'll be reaching out to you uh, to, to hopefully line up a workshop. I, I almost lined up a workshop in the Cayman Islands one time and, and then it just fell through. We didn't quite get that done. So we are yeah. always looking for um, live workshop hosts. Uh, it's actually fairly easy to do. We need 10 to 12 uh, potential candidates. Um, so if you're interested in hosting a workshop, uh, we'd love to do that. So lots of kudos coming in. Michelle saying thank you for these excellent presentations. Leslie, thank you for the sessions this week. I've wanted to find out more about Tai Chi and you made it so understandable. I'll be checking out your website and classes. Lori is also in Bermuda. There are two people in Bermuda on the same webinar. Um, <laughs> Amazing. So um, I think we've answered all. Oh, wait, there's one more question here. Um, can you expand a bit on what is included under business support within the membership? Same for the continued teaching support. Sure. With um, We have a Facebook group and we have that video membership group. Uh, uh, included in that Facebook group, we have all kinds of um, uh, documents, things that you can share with your clients. Um, we have a whole webinar on just setting up classes, how to advertise for them. Um, you know, my business partner Grant is drives our advertising, and um, you know, he explains he's the one that did this uh, marketing webinar for our instructors. Um, we have lots of different kinds of support um, with included in that Facebook group as well um, is the idea that if you're just setting something up or maybe you have been teaching and you run into a problem, you post those questions and now you've got all those instructors giving you ideas of how to overcome those issues. 
because you know I'm not going to be um, the, the be all and end all of the answers. There are there are different situations, and it's really nice to have that interaction of different situations and ideas of how to overcome problems. The video membership is really uh, our key to our continuing education because like I said on Tuesday, that, that site has almost 100 videos up. Some of them are for beginners, some of them for intermediate, but some of them are, are actually reserved for instructors and I teach you different advanced ideas as you go along. So once you learn the certification course, which teaches you the Yang Style 24 short form, that's not the end of your learning. You continue to learn through these videos, through both the Facebook group and the video membership site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not just left at the end of the course. No. So. Well, um, thanks again, Diane. Diane will be back on Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern, and you can ask her any and every question you want at that point. I hope you've checked out the website by then. Uh, but I want to show you a couple of people asking about specials on your course, discounts. Are we doing anything this week? We are uh, doing something a little special here. So let me show you that real quick. Um, so the Tai Chi course, as well as the Balance Matters course uh, will both be on sale if you buy both of them as a combo deal. And you're gonna get some bonus sessions. So let me just show you um, what we've got here. So the Balance Matters course, you're gonna see Erica again tomorrow. Um, here's the Tai Chi website, taichisystem.com. So you can learn more about this. I'm gonna scroll down here. So, um, I am on the right site, am I? Yeah, get certified. Um, mm -hmm. I had pulled this up earlier. So it's the basic certification. And you talked about the distinction, so I'll mention that. The basic certification is $199, and then you pay a $120 annual membership 30 days later that gives you all that additional ongoing. What we're doing this week is we're taking 50 bucks off the regular price here, as well as 50 bucks off of Erica's course. So you save $100 if you buy both of them. Um, so instead of paying 400, you're going to pay $300 and you get both courses. As a bonus, you're going to get the functional core and balance program from FAI, which I am in with Derek Mikulski. Uh, Cody's not in it, but he's in the promo video. So um, you're going to get this uh, $50 course absolutely free. We're just going to throw that in. It's a bunch of balance workouts that, that Derek and I uh, designed. So you're going to get that for free. Um, as well as four free sessions with Diane and Erica next week. So they're going to come back and do four more sessions. Diane's going to do a couple sessions basically from her Tai Chi workshop and Erica's going to do some sessions from her course. So they're going to help basically handhold you through the certifications, through the courses, um, and you get to do those live as a bonus. So that's kind of the deal this week at Balance Week. $100 off the two programs free functional core and balance program plus four more uh, live sessions with them next week. And then let me just show this again for people who are like, yeah, but I really want Diane to teach me one-on-one -on -one. for an additional hundred. She has this distinction and Diane, just tell people it says here, but I mean, they get basically two private calls with you. Is that how that works? Yes. Yes. They get two private sessions with me. It says Skype there, but it can be Skype zoom. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it is one on one with me. And just so that you, you understand too, you can add that distinction um, later on if you want to. You can get the basic certification, get started. And if you say, I really want to have those sessions, you can always contact me and you can just add on the distinction as well. Yeah, and people are asking about CEUs. Um, that's a great question to email Celia with. I see Gerda asking that, uh, AFA CEUs. Um, we are approved by NASM for all our courses and NASM owns AFA. So some courses are automatically AFA, some are not. Um, and I'm not sure, do you know if Tai Chi is AFA? Uh, you know, um, we are NASM, ACE and ACSM. I yep. don't believe AFA is part of that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't either. So that'd be a great email for Celia, contact at functionalagentinstitute.com. Um, sometimes we can get AFA added pretty easily since NASM now owns AFA. 
Um, and if we have enough interest, we'll, we'll always do that. So, um, mm -hmm. but I, sorry, I don't know that answer. I know all our courses are ACSM, NASM and ACE. Um, and the Tai Chi course is eight hours. So, you know, it's either 0.8 or eight, depending on the organization. Patty says, thanks, Diane. I took your Tai Chi certification course in 2018. My students rave about the calming, focusing, and balance benefits. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, Patty. Yeah. That's cool. Love hearing that stuff. Let's see if we have any other questions in the chat before we let everybody go here. I think that's it. Um, Oh, Barb's asking, um, yes, Brenda, the slides will be available. Um, we'll be sending a email uh, in a couple of hours with uh, the link to the sales page where you can get the discounts on the courses as well as the PDF for today and the replay, uh, of course, as well. If you're on the recording, um, you got the replay via email. Um, Barb's asking, Diane, would poses be doable for someone with scoliosis post-surgery, uh, rods and fused T4 through T11? Yes, actually, that my one client that I was talking about, her testimonial earlier where she had that back fusion, she had that because of scoliosis. And yes, I, we, we modify for anybody, okay? It, it, but yes, I have that specific example, but you know, there are different issues in different bodies and we don't do Tai Chi for perfection. We do it to help their body be the best it can be. So yes, you can modify as needed for any client. Yeah, great, great. Well, Diane, thanks so much. We will see you back again Friday morning. Um, Saturday morning. Sorry, Saturday morning. We'll see Erica tomorrow on Friday. We'll see both of you on Friday morning where people can ask questions about your programs. And uh, if you're on live right now, we will send you the handout uh, later. And if you're on the replay, hopefully you'll be able to join us Saturday to ask Diane questions. So thanks so much, Diane. All right, see ya. Bye-bye.